Hi friends and welcome. Today we are talking about age and fertility. If you are a woman, you know that the older you get, the harder it is to get pregnant. We've all heard of the term of advanced maternal age or AMA, hate that label personally, but today I'm breaking down what that means and what really happens to our bodies as we get older. Watch now. Hi friends, today I'm talking about age and fertility. I want you to know what happens as we get older and I am diving into that today. The truth is that women who are over 35 are called advanced maternal age and I hate that label. I mean, who would like that? But today I'm breaking down where that comes from, why you become high risk and what it means that's really happening inside your body. Two different things are happening. One is that you have a decrease in the number of eggs left in your ovary and the second is you have a decrease in the quality of eggs that are inside your ovary. When you put these two factors together, that is accounting for why it is harder to get pregnant as you get older. My favorite analogy that I came up with on how I describe the ovary to everybody is to imagine that inside your ovary, you have a vault. And inside the vault are all of the eggs that you're ever born with. So when you're born, the vault is full. And over the course of your life, the eggs come out of the vault and the vault is empty when you go into menopause. Full of birth, empty at menopause. What happens is that every month you're losing a group of eggs. A group of eggs comes out of the vault. And from those eggs, one of them will be chosen to ovulate and the rest will die. So if we think of our vault like that, a group of eggs comes out proportional to the number of eggs that remains inside. And that is key for us testing what we call ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve is how many eggs do you have inside the vault? That's what we're trying to determine. Where are you on this process of reproductive aging when it comes to having fewer eggs? And so we do that by testing the eggs outside the vault. Let me explain this a little bit better. So let's imagine you've got your vault and a group of eggs comes out. When you're young, so when you're less than 30, you have a lot of eggs. I'm gonna use number 20 for simplicity. 20 eggs come out of the vault. Now, you can't see eggs, they're microscopic, but eggs grow inside a fluid-filled structure called a follicle. And you can see a follicle on ultrasound. So each egg grows inside a follicle. So 20 follicles or 20 eggs come out of the vault. Fertility doctors, we love to use egg and follicle interchangeably. But the brain will then send out FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. FSH is a well-named hormone. So what happens is your group of follicles, each follicle carrying an egg comes out of the vault. The brain sends out FSH. FSH then stimulates one follicle to grow. As that follicle grows, the egg matures, makes estrogen, ovulates, rest of the eggs die, and then next month you have a new group come out. Well, this is really important to grasp because the size of the eggs that come out of the vault, meaning the number, that number corresponds to how many are left inside. So if you're less than 30 and you have 20 eggs come out of the vault, when you're about to go into menopause, you'll have closer to two or three eggs come out of the vault. And because I can't see in the vault, the vault is steel walled, I can check the eggs outside the vault as a surrogate marker for how many are inside. Meaning the more eggs outside, the more eggs inside, the fewer eggs outside, the fewer eggs inside. And this is measuring your ovarian reserve. So there's two ways that we check ovarian reserve. We check it with counting. So on ultrasound, this is called an antral follicle count or an AFC. And the other way is by checking a blood test called AMH, which stands for anti-mullerian hormone. Both of these values, the more, the merrier, lower, lower eggs. So for the antral follicle count, it's just as it sounds. We do a vaginal ultrasound and we count the small follicles that are outside the vault. That number is corresponding to a number and that's either going to be average, above average, below average, or critically low for your age. Same thing with AMH. So AMH, anti-malarian hormone, is made from the cells that surround all of the eggs outside the vault. So the more eggs, higher the AMH. Fewer eggs, lower the AMH. And this AMH test is helping us understand, just like the antral follicle count, which category are you in? So if you imagine you have your full vault and then you have your empty vault, here's the key. Every woman is born with a different starting number and every woman has a different rate of decline. 
So some women are running out faster and some have longer to go. We don't know where you are. And when we take a one-time snapshot, I don't have all the other variables. I don't know the slope of the line. So it's really only giving me information about your fertility right now. Meaning it could be high, but you could have been born with a really high number of eggs and they could be running out rapidly. So it is not predictive of your future fertility in two years or at any future time period. It is an evaluation of your ovarian reserve at this current moment. So for women, you're born with all the eggs you're ever going to have. You have more eggs today than you're going to have in the future because you are constantly running out of eggs as you go along through your life. And when you enter into menopause, that's when you don't have any eggs left. What makes these things harder to understand is that there's month to month variability and some influenced by lifestyle factors. Use the analogy of the vault again. I like to say there's a vault keeper. So you have a vault keeper who's standing at the vault determining when the eggs go out. And so if the average is 20, there's a range month to month. It could be 20, 22, 21, 17, 15, 28, 16, 20, right? The average is 20. So depending on if I see you at 16 or if I see you at 28, you're going to get a very different antral follicle count and a different AMH. That's why we try not to harp on these values and say, oh, your AMH is everything. And I really try to emphasize to my patients of the category you're going into normal, above average, below average, or critically low. And I'm letting that category guide me. Granted, if you're low or critically low, that feels really concerning like you did something wrong, but it just means you need to be ready to be more aggressive because we don't know what the future holds. And similarly, this is why you could get values one month that are low and six months later get values that are high. It all depends on where we're looking and what month we're looking at. Something else really important to know is really good studies have shown us that AMH does not correlate with your ability to get pregnant. That confuses the vast majority of women. It is predictive of how long you have to get pregnant, how many eggs we can get in an IVF or an egg freezing cycle, but month to month, it makes no difference compared to your peers who are your age. This is because your body doesn't care if you have three eggs come out of the vault or 30 eggs come out of the vault. The brain is sending out FSH. One of them is chosen. That one ovulates, the rest of them die. You're still just ovulating one egg and giving one egg an opportunity to become a pregnancy. So our measures of ovarian reserve, antral follicle count and AMH, they are helpful to give us perspective on our reproductive lifehood, what it looks like, how long we have, how aggressive we may need to be, but it doesn't change your natural rates of getting pregnant per month, okay? And it doesn't make a difference as far as it can change month to month. So don't you dare go get two plots and try to make some graph. It does not work like that. You're running out of eggs as you get older. I think we're all quite aware of that idea. But the other thing that happens that perhaps matters a little more to us is you have a decrease in the quality of eggs. I'll be the first to admit, I don't love this word quality. I don't, but it's the word and it's the best word to describe what we're talking about. What we are talking about is random genetic abnormalities that increase as you get older. Now I've got my egg. Inside your egg are your chromosomes and women are 46 XX, but eggs are only 23 X. So interestingly, what happens is your chromosomes pair up 23 X, 23 X. You have two copies of every chromosome and they sit there in the middle. It's called metaphase meet in the middle. It's how we remember metaphase when you're learning mitosis and meiosis, but they're frozen in metaphase of meiosis waiting to split into the egg when you ovulate. Now, I don't know why this is how human reproduction is. I don't know why our eggs couldn't have split and then stayed in that perfect standpoint, but this is really essential in understanding why as you get older, you have an increased prevalence of genetic abnormalities and worse egg quality. Okay, so those chromosomes are met in the middle, 23X, 23X. They are held apart by meiotic spindles. Meiotic spindles are proteins. So essentially they have little proteins that are sitting there holding those eggs apart. The next step is that when you ovulate, those proteins pull those chromosomes apart. Part of them go into something called the polar body, it's trash, but the others go into the egg. 23X is normal, and that is what should come and be fertilized by sperm and become your baby. Now what happens is like the rest of our body, our proteins break down as we get older. Now what happens is just like the rest of our body, our proteins break down as we get older. So instead of having a perfectly even split, we are more prone to have an uneven split as we age. And that is what's super important to realize when we start talking about your eggs. 
because if you're 20, your chromosomes have been sitting there for 20 years, your proteins have been there for 20 years, and they're very strong, just like everything if you're 20. So your odds of splitting into a normal egg is very high. And when you're 40, and your chromosomes have been sitting here for 40 years, your odds of splitting into a normal egg are very low. Now there's some misnomers here and some things that are important to talk about. One is that a lot of the chromosome abnormalities are not compatible with life. They are actually things that cause miscarriage. That's why there's a higher chance of miscarriage as you get older or chromosome abnormalities that don't even allow implantation. And that's why your pregnancy rates get lower as you get older. So between the age of 30 to 40, we see a decreased chance of getting pregnant per month and an increased chance of miscarrying if you do in fact get pregnant. Miscarriage rates for a woman who is 35 are around 20% and miscarriage rates for a woman who's 40 are closer to 50%. Those, wow, that's heartbreaking to hear that, but those factors are why it's incredibly harder for the majority of women to get pregnant as you get older. So when we put some of this together, there was a great study done by Ann Steiner, and she was my mentor for all my fellowship research. Ann is an epidemiologist. She has a master's in public health. I have a master's of science in clinical research, by the way. One term that we use a lot when we start talking about epidemiology or the observation of populations is fecundability. Fecundability, it means the chance of getting pregnant per cycle. So per egg that you ovulate, what is your chance of getting pregnant per that egg? Most of my fellowship research was in a cohort of women. That means a group of women who Dr. Steiner investigated. These are women age 30 and older who were trying to get pregnant and it was called time to conceive. And taking data from almost a thousand women reproductive age, she was able to determine modern day fecundability rates. So the baseline, what we tend to think is the baseline rate of getting pregnant per cycle when you're under the age 30 is going to be around 20%. Okay. So that's not hundred percent. So not everybody gets pregnant on the first try. All right. About 20% of people do. And that's why you hear from most women when they first start trying to get pregnant, it's going to take you about four to six months to get pregnant. And that's because it's about 20% per try. Once you get outside of that, it starts to become statistically lower each month. So if I'm going to throw out some numbers to you in this study, what we saw is that women who are age 31 to 33 had a chance of getting pregnant per month around 18%. Women who are age 34 to 37 had about an 11 to 12% chance of getting pregnant. Women who are age 38 to 39 had a 5% chance of getting pregnant. And women who were 40 or older had a 3% chance. 3% per month is not zero, but it certainly is showing us that your odds of getting pregnant naturally is not very high. And the longer you take, the worse your egg quality is getting and you're gonna have fewer eggs. So these factors become really important to us. Part of this data is why once you're age 35 or older, we in the fertility community and doctors and OBGYNs recommend that women try no longer than six months before they start coming to us for an evaluation. And if you're 40, you should come to me first because you don't have time to waste. So we often want to do an evaluation at the very beginning and make sure there's no obvious problems. Now, egg quality data always tends to strike people as pretty overwhelming and these fecundability rates always feel very low. Remember that for any given woman, the chance of success is either 100% or 0%. And so these numbers are purely to gain us perspective. Even a 1% chance of success is not a 0%. So it can happen, but my question for you is, does it make sense for you to continue in that way? Is that in line with your goal? Is that going to achieve you the family that you dream? The other thing that I think is super important to talk about here is that egg quality is somewhat influenced by your lifestyle overall. We know this, although we don't understand how much exactly. I like to think the majority of it is your age, because even when you control for lifestyle factors, age predominates as the number one predictive factor of your egg quality. But there's some component that's lifestyle driven. And so what we know, for example, is that if you smoke cigarettes, you're going to have more abnormal eggs. You're going to have a decrease in egg quality. You're going to have a decrease in egg number, and you're going to have an increased chance of miscarriage. So stop smoking. Other environmental toxins cause similar results. Smoking marijuana, drinking excess alcohol, endocrine disrupting chemicals, advanced glycolation end products. These factors may impair our natural fertility. So you want to start to avoid toxins, eat clean, avoid heavy animal products, avoid plastics and microwaving and different things like that. And there's also supplements that potentially can improve egg quality. How I like to explain this is it's not that you're going to take a pill of CoQ10 and suddenly you're going to have more eggs, but if you can support these proteins, these meiotic spindles, by giving them nutrients they need, perhaps they can function better. And that may be why diets high in fruits and vegetables, antioxidants, and certain supplements help women get 
pregnant. The last thing I want to say is that none of this means that there is no hope. I think women are super smart and you deserve to be educated. And what that means to me is I want you to take this data and think about your own life. When is the ideal time to get pregnant? And when should you start considering intervening if you're not ready to get pregnant? Typically, it looks like the ideal age is around 32 to 33. If you're not ready to get pregnant, that perhaps you should consider egg freezing or embryo freezing. That way you can get eggs and preserve your fertility for the future. That's around the age where you have the peak number of eggs and the peak egg quality for the majority of women but not for every woman. I do have some women who are already in diminished ovarian reserve or have low egg counts at that age. And I have young women who have poor egg quality that has nothing to do with them. It's something about how they were born or how their eggs were developed. You should control what you can. And that's what I always try to empower my patients with. You can't control everything, but you might as well control what you can. If you would like a video on improving natural fertility, let me know down below. That way I can get to it. Guys, thank you so much for your support. This is still a brand new channel. I'm still trying to learn my ways and I'd love to hear what you wanna know. Please subscribe. Please leave feedback and comments. Please feel free to follow me on Instagram at Natalie Crawford MD. And I have lots of topics over on the As a Woman podcast that you can listen to for more in-depth learning. Thank you guys.